these are the rack offset spacers. So basically what this is for is it's to allow the tie rod to sit further forward than it normally does. And you can see there's these little tabs on here. So what we have to do is grind a couple of notches in the steering rack. What I'll probably do is throw this in here and then I'll just go in and mark it with a Sharpie so I can see exactly where I need to grind at. Also, always wear safety glasses. So I'm gonna be wearing those as well as gloves when I do this just to kind of protect myself. All right, so I got that ground down so that this now fits in here so we can get this threaded in. So now I'm gonna get ready to cut the cross member. So I need to grind all of this material back here until it gets back to the steering rack to make room for this guy. So I'm gonna push the rack all the way the other way. So if I just turn the wheel here, Now I should be able to get my grinder in there. I got one side installed just so I had all the specs and the right measurements of everything. So I'm gonna walk through how to actually get all the angle kit stuff on. The only thing I've done since I grinded everything down was I just put some red Loctite on the threads of this bolt and then got it started. Um, next, we have to remove the wheel hub from the old uh, knuckle. So what I'm going to do is just remove the four bolts. So I'm going to leave these two in so that I can tap them out in the vise. To get these out, I'll usually just give a few good taps. I would definitely recommend using new hubs if you're gonna be doing all this work to put on an angle kit, but these hubs are relatively new, so I'm not gonna worry about it. First thing I did was just set all the links for the arm. For my arm, I set uh, this piece, so it's just an inch of threads in here, um, and then this one I set so that there's three centimeters from here uh, to the edge here. Another thing I'll have to do is get a shorter bolt for the rear control arm mount. And that's because the original bolt is a little too long and it'll hit the tie rod relocation. Luckily I had these ones laying around and they're actually the perfect lengths. So I'm gonna be using those. So another thing I've been doing is I've been just paint marking all the bolts as I get them installed. So I'll just draw a line from the head of the bolt go down the side of the bolt, and then on whatever part it touches. And I'll do that for all the bolts, just so that if they ever move, I can see it. So for this part of the control arm, we have these two spacers. So the bigger diameter spacer is gonna go on top, the smaller diameter spacer is gonna go on the bottom. So this is gonna go on like so, and then we're gonna get this control arm on, and then we're gonna get this bottom spacer, and then, you're gonna put your cross member support or your control arm support and then the bolt. Once we get those two bolts in, we can get this bolt tight. So that's gonna be a 22 millimeter. Now for the tie rods, if you have a stock body car like me, you have to cut the tie rods. I cut mine to uh, 30 millimeters to fit inside here. Uh, so it's about 40 millimeters total. And that's just because the tie rods are super long. So if you have like a wide body car, you can still fit uh, them and have plenty of threads extra. Of course, do your own measurements before you cut anything because my car might be different than your car. So to get the tie rod on, I'm just gonna spin the wheel all the way to the right. That piece is gonna be sticking all the way out. I'm also gonna throw some blue Loctite on here to prevent this guy from coming loose uh, from vibration and stuff like that. 
Then to tighten them up, I'll just take an adjustable wrench, fit it to the size. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get it at, get at a weird angle, but you should be able to get an adjustable on there and get it nice and tight. And then we'll get the knuckle on. So the knuckle, just unthread this bolt here. And then the knuckle just kind of plops on like so. And then you'll need just a couple of 19s. So now that we have the knuckle on, we can get the tie rod end on. So this is just going to thread into here. Um, but these spacers, you need three spacers below the tie rod and then um, just a washer above. Now this is where you have to choose your Ackerman plates. Uh, personally me, I want to try parallel steering. So I'm going to be using the spacers for parallel steer steering. And basically how this works is they send you a bunch of different spacers. So it starts off with six as parallel and one as Ackerman. And then these are kind of the in-between. Um, so I'm going to be trying parallel just because I'm curious to see what it feels like. So these plates just get set onto here like this. And then you can put the end link through like that. And then put this nut on. And then this gets tightened together. And this is going to be a 22 millimeter as well. Next is going to be the coilover. It's always a good idea to hang your brake calipers with some bungee cord so it's not just hanging by the lines. I have the caliper out of the way so that we can get the coilover back on. Now that I have this installed, definitely remember to put these spacers in. These spacers go above the strut right here. I mentioned it in the previous video and I'll mention it again just because it is super important. All right, now we need to put the strut bolts on. All right, now that the strut is connected, I'm gonna get this hub in here. The only thing I'm gonna do is get some anti seize put on around this hub where it meets the actual knuckle. My GoPro ended up dying, but all I did was just tighten up the four hub bolts. Also, with the Part Shot Max knuckle, you can't run the dust shield because there isn't the bolt holes for it. Uh, but the next thing I'm gonna do is just get this rotor on here. And then I'll get the brake caliper reinstalled. Now that the brake assembly is all together, I'm going to get this ABS wire plugged in. So this just pops into this hole here. You just use an M6 bolt. I'm going to use some fancy hardware just because I have it sitting around. To hold the brake line, I like to use zip ties because the Part Shop Max coils don't actually come with a threaded hole for a bolt. The only other thing that I'll do is leave the ABS wire inside of that so that it's held in by the brake line um, and it won't go flopping around and get hit by your wheel or something like that. Now that that is all together, the only thing I have to do is just get this tie rod threaded onto here. And then these jam nuts just tighten together. And then that's it. Now all of the arms and stuff are on. Uh, now the only thing that's left is a sway bar. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get two of the bolts started. I'm going to get one started on this side. And then I'll pop over to the other side and get one started over here. I'm going to throw some anti seas on these bolts just because they are looking a little rough and I want to be able to get them out in the future.
Now to connect this, we just unscrew this bolt here, and then this is simply going to connect 